There's one roguelike game that I've always loved and even made a video about it earlier this year. But on December 22nd, it got a huge update to rework the entire game really, and it's Tiny Rogues. The main gist of Tiny Rogues is you travel through 10 to 13 levels, with each level having 10 floors to go through. In your run, you pick up weapons and traits based around one of the three upgrade categories with strength, intelligence, and dexterity, and all of those will determine what type of run you will have. But of course, there's a lot more to it than just that, and I want to try to cover everything that I basically can and show you why this may be one of the best games you can get for $10. The first and biggest thing there is to talk about this game is the variety inside and outside of a run. The game has 35 total characters, all of which need to be unlocked, and about half of them are very easy to unlock. But with how many characters are here, you'll never have a stale run, as every character is strong in different areas with strength, dexterity, and intelligence. And minus the crazy amount of characters, you still have a free item you're able to take before starting the run, whether it be keys, bombs, or a storm in a bottle, and there's obviously a lot more. But where this game somehow shines even more than the 35 characters is inside of a run with variety. Like I said earlier, there's 10 to 13 floors depending on how long you want your run to be, as it takes time to unlock the last floors with the world level in the hub area. In the world level, you can just level up by naturally playing the game. But in the first nine floors, you have a handful of unique bosses, all with intricate movesets, making each fight feel incredibly distinctive to one another. And each floor also has their own unique enemies and the difficulty pacing for the game feels good as a whole. But if we look deeper into that, every level there is still a crazy amount of variety, and it can be a little overwhelming, but it's very easy to pick up on. Every single level you have event rooms, combat rooms, and then what we'll call health rooms. Event rooms are a small event or mini game that you play, and if you succeed, you get an item. Combat rooms are the most common where you will fight a handful of enemies and receive a reward afterward. And rewards can be XP boost to level up your strength, intelligence, or dexterity, which all give you a slight boost with each point you get. Every point in strength gives you 1% more damage and 5 more carrying capacity. Every dexterity point gives you 1% more attack speed and 0.5% more in movement speed. And every point in intelligence gives you a 1% higher chance to have a critical hit. And your builds will tend to focus on one of those areas more than the others. And sometimes you'll find rooms that give you 3 points at once, or even 2 different buffs at a time. More rewards can include keys to open up secret doors or chests which could contain weapons, potions, or resins, bombs that allow you to blow up rocks which could give you more health, refill your flask, or soul hearts, and then one of the game's currencies could be a reward. And sometimes you just get a free weapon. The game has a lot of different rewards with combat rooms, but another big area inside of the run are the health rooms, or more so stores and taverns, which will be focused on in another section. But let's first talk about the craziest thing about the variety in this game to me, and it's the amount of weapons and equipment you can find. Every single run you will be finding new items you've never even seen. I mean, this latest this update alone added 500 new items, and the game now has 400 weapons total, along with the new addition set items, which is where you'll have two or more pieces of a set, and if you have those two pieces, you get an extra buff. In every single run, you can have different items with buffs like helmets, accessories, and gloves, the usual stuff you'd see from a Souls-like game, because this game does have some inspiration to a Souls-like. That can lead to something that can be a little more annoying, but you learn to live with it, and it's weight capacity on items. I'm just more impressed with the crazy amount of items available, and the amount of different effects that they have. You have your usual effects of damage over time with poison, burn, lightning, and frost effects, but Tiny Rogues has so much more with effects and synergies, and most weapons in the game will grant some type of effects on the enemies, and can potentially turn into a crazy build. That's something I love with all of these weapons and equipment items. You could be swapping weapons on the ninth floor in your run, and still have something incredibly busted based off your trait, which you get from leveling up, just in case I missed that. You get a new trait after gaining 5 XP and each trait benefits builds you have, but you only get 6 in a run. And lastly, with weapons, you can easily have enchantments on them or upgrade them with the blacksmith, and that makes the weapons incredibly powerful. Really, there's so much to talk about with weapons and equipment, I feel like I've missed something, but... Really, if you dive into this game, you'll be able to see the vast variety available. It's on the level of Enter the Gungeon with how much it has. Maybe not Binding of Isaac levels yet in terms of items, but give it time, we'll see what happens. And while weapons and equipment have the most variety in this game, there's still some variety inside with the currencies in the game with gold and souls. And for the purpose of trying to cover everything, I'm going to talk about alignment and being lawful good in this section as it fits. 
trust me. But first, the game only has two currencies you need to worry about with gold and souls. You get gold from combat rooms, selling items, and some event rooms will give you some gold depending on the outcome. It does what you expect really, it just buys you items in a run. I do like all the different ways you can spend your gold from inside the tavern with all the NPCs that give you some sort of buff or weapon, all the different random shops you can encounter, but a currency that we should focus more on is the souls. You get souls after killing a boss and sometimes as a room reward, but it definitely is a lot more rare to see as a reward. But the souls can be used in a few shops, but buying items will affect your alignment and depending on where you buy items will make your character good or evil. The alignment and being good or evil is something that was added to the game recently that will affect you going to the 12th floor. After clearing the hell or heaven areas once, you can unlock a new shop that will spawn after every few bosses, and buying an item from that shop will give you a point towards being good or evil depending on what shop you chose. But these items can only be bought with souls, and if you have a certain amount of points in good or evil, good for heaven and evil for hell of course, you can go to a 12th floor in the game. So basically, the soul currency will allow you to potentially go to the 12th floor, if you buy 4 items from one of the 3 shops. Every run you want to focus on one of the shops, and each floor has their own unique boss. It just goes back to the incredible variety that this game has, and how in depth it can actually be. And even with a crazy run, you can still kill those 12th floor bosses quite fast, which I always love. Love. Really, I feel like there's some things that I miss while talking about the variety in terms of starting the run, all the different weapons and equipment you can find, all the different status effects that you have. There's so many secrets that you can find in this game, it's absolutely incredible. But there's still more that this game added with this new update, and one thing that was added was a more in-depth meta progression. After every run you gain mastery points based off how many bosses you've killed, and every time you level up after a certain amount of mastery points, you can unlock one skill point in the fireplace towards long term upgrades. I'll be 100% honest, none of these buffs seem super mandatory, but all of them do make a nice, small change in your run. The one that I've noticed is my favorite is the free revive as you don't get a lot of health in this game, so a revive comes in handy. But in terms of meta progression, you can gain more mastery points based off how many difficulty enhancers you have on with cinders. The game has 16 cinders total, with each one adding a negative effect into the game, but having one on will give you a 30% more mastery XP. But I'll say some cinders are a lot worse compared to others for all having the same value. Like not being able to see your first trait. Yeah, that's kind of annoying, but it's not as bad as starting the game with one health and empty flats with how rare healing can be. You basically need to play the first floor perfectly for that cinder, which isn't as hard as it sounds, but my point still stands with all the cinders having the same XP value for mastery points, but some of them being significantly worse than others. It'll just turn me away from ever turning them on. Really, this roguelite has everything you can imagine, and there's definitely a few things that I missed covering that will impact a run. Like, companions are also new, where you can have some little pets help fight with you, and every companion can also leave some crazy effects. They've even added a fireplace in between each level which allows you to buy extra health or stamina which is your dash or even just refill all of your health or attune all your items and attuning your items gives you a buff but the fireplaces are a new addition that costs soul to use which makes you have to balance your soul currency even better there's just a lot of small changes that they've added that are a lot of quality of life changes as well that make the run so much more fun in the long term it's nearly a perfect roguelite with item and class variety some pretty great meta progression great difficulty enhancers and most importantly a dev that really cares. And even after releasing this update, Ruby, the developer, even announced plans for the next three updates, which will transition the game into 1.0, and I cannot even imagine how much content will be in this game by then. If you ask me 100 times if I think you should buy this, I'd say yes every time. But there are some small nitpicks with this game, and I know they're gonna get addressed, but I'll quickly say a few of mine. One of the biggest things is the amount of text on the screen for this game, which I know sounds crazy, and personally, I read everything, but for a lot of people, the amount of text in reading will be a giant turnoff as they just want to play the game and not worry too much. Number two, and this is more so a me issue, but I'm not the biggest fan of weight limits on items. I can understand why it's in the game, and I don't think it should be removed after playing this update more, as some equipment items are balanced around it. But making it a tad easier to obtain extra weight consistently outside of just picking extra strength buffs could be good. I feel it's a necessity to focus on strength a little bit, even on builds where I don't want strength traits at 
all. And really, those are my main three complaints I have, and they're not even that large of complaints. I love this little roguelite, and the amount it offers is more than a $10 purchase. It's honestly nuts. It's one of those games I feel people will talk about years down the line as one of the greatest roguelites you could play. It's definitely one of my favorites, and it's getting closer and closer to the top of that ladder. And yeah, thanks for watching this Tiny Rogues video, and extra special shout out to the people that support me on Patreon. That extra support really means the world, you have no idea. And yeah, that's all. See you next time.